In this video, I want to have a look at problems involving permutations where we have groups within our problem. So when we have a situation like that, we're going to look at the number of different ways the groups can be arranged, and then we're going to have a look at how many ways we can arrange the individuals within each group, and then we multiply our answers. So let's go through a few examples. So our first example says that we have five balls of different colours. We've got red, blue, green, yellow and white. We want to know how many ways we can arrange them in a line if our red and yellow balls must go together. So if we didn't have that restriction and we were just arranging them in a row, we've got five balls so we would have five factorial different ways that we could arrange them. But because of that restriction, our red and yellow, we have to first consider them as one item. So what we're going to do then first is if we consider them as one item, then we only have four things. So we're going to say we can arrange it in four factorial different ways. Then we need to say, okay, well, our red and yellow, if we just look at our red and yellow, we can put them together. We can arrange them in two factorial different ways. And then we're going to multiply those two answers together. And we would end up with 48 different ways we can arrange them, assuming that we have to keep the red and yellow together. So just again, the four factorial is arranging the groups and the two factorial is arranging the individuals within that group that we have. Our second example says that we have a group of five boys and four girls lining up and we want to know how many ways they can be arranged. For part A, we're just saying without any restrictions. So without any restrictions, we have nine people. So they would be able to be rearranged in nine factorial different ways, which would be 362,880. Part B says, how many ways can they be arranged if all the girls want to stand together? So that means we've got five boys and we're taking the girls all as one group. So that means if we arrange the groups first, we would have six factorial different ways of arranging them. And then we're going to multiply it by the number of ways we can arrange the girls amongst their own group. So within those four girls, we would have four factorial different ways of arranging them. So we multiply those together and we'll end up with 17,280. So our last example is a little bit different. It says how many arrangements of the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are possible if the even numbers must be separated? So just to clarify, zero isn't odd or even, so our only even numbers are our two and our four. Now, the ways that that can happen are huge, and it's actually quite difficult to calculate. The easier way to do it is to figure out how many uh, arrangements would be possible if we had no restrictions at all. Then we can figure out how many arrangements would be possible where the odd numbers were together. And then the number of arrangements where they're separate is going to be whatever's left over. So then we can do one minus the other to get our answer for this question. So let's have a look first at no restrictions. Because we have six digits, we could arrange them in six factorial different ways. Now I'm not going to evaluate that yet. I'm just going to leave it until my final answer. Okay, so the next thing was how many ways can I arrange them if my even numbers must be together? So if I count my two and my four as one group, that means that I only have five things to arrange. So I'm going to have five factorial times, and then I have to arrange those two numbers within their group. So the two and the four could be arranged in two factorial different ways. All right, so now we can answer our actual question. So the number of arrangements where those two even numbers are separate is going to be the total number of arrangements minus the number of arrangements where they're together. So if we calculate that, we would end up with 960. So that's having a look at permutations with groupings.